morning. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. Good morning, family and friends. Uh, I want you to know that I'm not Pastor Kazee. I am his assistant. Uh, the pastor's down with the flu, so if you don't mind, I'm going to have to stand in for him today. And I'm going to do the best I can, and I want you to know I'm not going to sell you short. On uh, this great service for a great lady, Sister Eve Baumberg. Amen. And we cannot help but notice that our sister is going down in style. And this is the first time I've ever witnessed the classiest of the classy go down like this. Entertainers don't go down like our dear sister this morning. We are ready to get started, and I need to check for a few names because I don't know any of these names that are on the program this morning. And the first thing that I would like to acknowledge to see if you are present is Thea Hall. Thea Hall, God bless you, Thea. One name, man. You can come. Please come. Please come. I forgot to acknowledge Colonel Robert Clements. Colonel? God bless you, Colonel. I don't know so. After the reading of the scripture, we will have prayer by Colonel Clements. And then Mrs. Emily Duncan is going to come with the announcements as well as the resolutions. Thank you. Father, we come to thank you 
most of all, for letting us gather and celebrate yes. the life of Eve Bamberg. Eve Bamberg, the daughter. Eve Bamberg, the sister. Amen. Eve Bamberg, the mother. Yes. Eve Bamberg, the grandmother. Yes. And Eve Bamberg, the cousin and friend. Father, we be come again to say that we know everything is done in your time. Yeah. Yes, we would love to have her as long as we, we, we want, but that's just not your will. Yeah. Father, we know everything is done in your time. We yeah. pray and ask that you give us a front to carry on Please in me. our actions. Lord, we ask this of us in your presence. And yes, we won't be able to hear her magical touch on the piano anymore. Yeah. But we take solace in the fact that she's now playing with you for all the time. Yeah. And she's put on her robe. She's yours. Yeah. And as you say, Lord, I am humble and obey. The beginning and the end. Yeah. Just say it to the Lord. Say to the Lord. Jizz, was that which is to come. The Almighty. These and all things we ask in your precious name. Amen. 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 Amen.
DOG, the care department. Lord, please wrap your gently arms around those who are grieving. Give strength for today and hope for tomorrow. Let your presence be felt in a special way because you're the one who loves us so much. Your family thanking of you with sincere sympathy and heartfelt prayers in the care of Minister Carrington and the family. God bless you, family. Amen. I just want to say I happened to be on the key all that time. And she sang with me in the choir. I was the director of the choir at the time. Many, many times I knew of her little secret of playing the piano. But she would always say, shh, don't tell nobody. appreciation for the finer things in life 
and could often be found frequenting country clubs, golf courses, and lounges. In December 1973, the two were wed at Mount Olivet Baptist Church in Rochester, New York. In 1975, Eve and Jerome relocated to Los Angeles, California to join her daughter, Gwen and Millie, and her granddaughter, Benny Cotton. Upon her relocation, Eve joined Bethany Baptist Church in West Los Angeles under the leadership of Pastor R. Johnson. She quickly found her place in the music ministry and could be found in the soprano section of the choir or playing the piano. Soon after moving, Eve's business savviness quickly kicked in and she opened her Los Angeles location of Eve's Birdland. After operating for a number of years, Eve decided to pursue other business ventures. In the early 1980s, Eve began her study of gemology and upon certification became a gemologist. She was employed by the May Company of Los Angeles as a fine jewelry and gem specialist. She prided herself on selling only the best jewels and was considered one of the go-to gemologists of the time by many celebrities. Eve's husband, Jerome, passed away in 1989. However, joyous news came weeks later when Eve learned she would be a grandmother once again. <laughs> she eagerly retired from her position at the May Company and began preparing her home to assist her daughter Millie with raising her new child, Shemina. <laughs> For the next 18 years, Eve was devoted to the care and rearing of her granddaughter. In 2012, Eve relocated to Buckeye, Arizona, where her daughter Millie and <coughs> son-in-law Willie Cole. She spent the next four years relaxing at the pool, playing her piano, being spoiled by her granddaughter, and enjoying the fruits of her labor. On February 20th, 2016, Eve made her final transition from this earth to her heavenly home. She leaves to cherish her memories, son Edsel D. Willis, daughter Gwen Willis, son-in-law Willie Coley, granddaughters Benny Ty Brown, Shemina Shivers, and Natasha Perkins, grandson Edsel Willis Jr., sisters Millie Norman and Robin Perry, brothers Paul and Edsel Clements, along with a number of nieces, nephews, cousins, and friends. Today, we celebrate and rejoice in the life and the legacy of stars. Amen. Amen. Uh, I take it that you are uh, the spoiled granddaughter. Am I correct? It's two of them. Okay, at this time, we're going to have Mr. Daryl Johnson and friends going to come and going to bless us with a Bethlehem of songs. Amen. Why don't you put your hands together as they come and bless us in song. You can do better than that. Come on, this is a celebration.
will never forget it. And I just want to say we love her and we're going to miss her very much. And that's it. Amen.
um, playing the piano all the time, so much that we used to say, can we watch TV? And she said, oh, just let me tinkle them keys a little bit. Just tinkle them keys. But um, she, was, she was such an awesome woman of God. One of the things that I really wanted to bring home more than anything is not about my grandmother, but really about the love of Jesus Christ Amen. and about how much God loves us. Um, it's probably 23 months um, that we led my mother to rest. And at that time, I didn't really understand, you know, why at such a young age are we, you know, here for my mom, and then 23 months later, we're here for my grandmother. But the Lord began to really work with me and explain some things to me that, mm -hmm. you know, although they're, they're gone, I want you to know how much I love you. Mm -hmm. And it was about this agape love, All this right. unconditional love. Right. Right. Yes. And he began to show me that in Jeremiah 29, 11, it talks about, for I know the plans that I have for yes. you. Yes. So he already knew yes. about my mother. He already knew about my grandmother and about how he was going to do these things. But he also loved me. Love my sister, love my aunts and my dad and my friends and family so much that he allowed us the opportunity to spend some really um, memorable years um, knowing what was going to be forthcoming. Mm -hmm. And so um, I don't shed any tears today over the loss of my grandmother. My grandmother was good to me from from my birth. We we have just been it's been a, such an indescribable. Um, relationship that she and I had. I never lied to my grandmother. You know, my mama now can ask me something. <laughs>
and uh, I empathize with the family because I recently lost my mother just last year, and so I know the pain. And uh, what I've learned is that you know they just slip away, and they just slip away uh, when they least expect it. But I'm grateful. She lived a full life. And just like our sister E. Bamber lived a full life. And if you don't mind, um, I'm standing in for our senior pastor, Dr. L.A. because he was down with the flu. And if he could be here, believe me, he would. We had a long week last week. We had three nights of revival. And then followed by three homegrown services, back to back to back. And so it kind of took its toll on him. And so we're standing in his stead, and we thank God for each of you. And I thank God for what I've experienced so far. I don't know about you, but I, I am honored to be here to share with this family a uh, well-educated, intelligent, um, black family. Uh, what I like to call uh, the old black families, where people are brought up right. Yeah. Amen. 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 Uh, the grandmothers don't grand, don't party with the kids and the grandkids, but right. grandma stays in her place. Yeah. Right. Amen. And so I just want the family to know it's a privilege to stand and to break bread from the good life. Share a few things with you this morning, and uh, I want to tell you up front that I'm going to take the scenic route to one point. That all right with you? Let us pray. Father, we thank you for time spent thus far in acknowledging you and our deceased sister, Sister Eve Bamberg, stands in your presence. And so we ask right now, our Father, that you would give us ears to hear, eyes to see what the Spirit has to say to the church. Then, our God, we ask and pray that you would take us to the mountain top that we might behold wondrous things. But these and all other blessings we do ask in Jesus' name. And all who read said, Amen. Amen. Would like to, first of all, acknowledge my friend and my brother, Brother Ed Berry, who have been known for a long time. And for the Bethanites that are here, I see one, two, three. Why don't you stand, Bethanites? We know Eve sang with the choir. And I see the president of the choir is here. Amen. Representing the choir. Emily, Sister Richardson, uh, is in support this morning. We want to draw your attention to a very familiar passage of scripture, if you will, and you don't really need to open your Bibles because I'm going to read it to you. And if you're a Bible reader, you know this, this text very well. It's found in Romans chapter 6 and verse 23. It simply says that for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And just for a tag this morning, I just want to talk very briefly about what God did for us. Amen. Amen. Turn to the person next to you and just say what God did for us. Amen. Amen. Book of Romans explores, if you will, the significance of Christ's sacrificial death. It is a book which uses a question and answer format. The great Apostle Paul uses such words as what then? Or what shall we say? A wherefore in his arguments. My main point here in Romans 6.23 is where Paul utters these words, for the wages of sin is death. Wages are what one has worked for. But here in Romans, when Paul uses this word wages, he is referring to what a Roman soldier received as pay from the king to go to war or pay received for being in the military or pay received with the risk 
of his body and sweat and brow, and so wages were something that was due to him. The apostle uses another contrast, which is like being on the job. Amen. We think of workers who have agreed to give a certain part of their time to an employer to receive a wage. But now we all know that if you're working, and the young people need to understand this if you're in the house this morning, that, that with that employer, within that time, they are at the disposal and under the orders of your employer. Meaning you can't do what you want to do and you can't say what you want to say. You, you have sold yourself to the employer to do just what they want you to do. During the working hours, you belong to your employer. During the working hours, you can't do what you want to do unless the employer agrees. If the employer says no talking on the phone, they mean just that. No talking on the phone. If they said break time is not until 10, 10, not 10 o'clock, they mean 10, 10. And so you are under the orders of your employer. During working hours, you cannot quit until the agreed quitting time. Amen. Sometimes folks just like to say, you know what, I've had enough. I'm getting out of here. I'm going home. No, not until the agreed quitting time. Amen. And, and some of you are here today that are old school. Remember way back in the day, we used to call the job the slave. You know, on Sunday night, you say, well, let me get up and get ready for this slave in the morning because that's just what you did. You knew you had to slave because you couldn't quit. Amen. And, and a slave has to follow the directions of a master. But when that time ends, they can do as they wish. And so Paul uses this contrast to let us see that at one time we were all slaves to sin. And that sin had exclusive possession of us. You know what Romans 6.23 says? It says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. No one is born righteous. No one is born a Christian, even though you have been well trained in a well-mannered home, regardless of the fact all of us here today have come short of the glory of God. Yes. Amen. I, I was raised just like you. I was raised to, to respect my elders, to respect women. I remember growing up when I was a teenager, I used to have to take my grandmother grocery shopping. I used to have to go over to my grandmother's house and help her work in the yard all day in the hot sun and not complain. But then I found out that when I became a Christian that I was a slave to sin, something that I did not understand. I was out in the world doing things, could not stop, but did not understand that I was a slave sold to sin. And let me explain something to you now this morning, family, that sin is not what you do, sin is who you are. The scripture says, wherefore, as by one man sin entered the world, and death by sin, and so death has passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. It's not what you do, it's who you are. And I don't want to bust anybody's bubble this morning, but I need to let you know that all of us have the potential to do some of the most heinous things because of the fact that we're sinners. And we have been sold to sin by our father, Adam. And so sin, if you will, was your employer. And that's what Paul is saying to the Romans in Romans chapter 6. He says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? But he says, God forbid. How shall we, who are uh, free from sin, live any longer therein. And so he draws a great contrast. 
The contrast, first of all, is that you have, we have been sold into sin, but now he says, now that you have been, been you have received Christ, you are no longer a slave unto sin. Do you hear me this morning? You, you have in your hand, or if you will, if, if you were to go to sin and say, you know what, sin, uh, sin I want my pay for what I've done and how I served you. You know what sin is going to hand you? Sin is going to hand you death. That's the only type of pay that you can receive from sin is that sin is going to pay you in the form of death. And we need to understand here that this morning that death is the enemy of mankind. Amen. 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 You know, God, he calls us home, but he uses death as a workhorse to get us to him. Amen. It is death that takes us, but God calls us using death. Listen to what 1 Corinthians 15 uh, 26 says, it says, for he must reign, meaning Christ, till he has put all enemies under his feet. Verse 26, the last enemy that will be destroyed is death. Death is an enemy to mankind and Jackie to God, and when Jesus comes, he will put death under, excuse me church, under his feet. The book of Revelations lets us know that at the final judgment, death and hell will be cast into the lake of fire. So when we talk about what's going on in the world, know today that death is your enemy. Can I get a witness this morning? Amen. And so since, since uh, according to the scriptures, death is paying way, death of sin is paying wages in death, and I heard somebody talk about the goodness of God, that's where the second part of Romans comes in. And I need you to listen to this very carefully because it says, for the wages of sin is death, but, that means you need to take notice, but the gift of God is through Jesus Christ our Lord. Which means that when you make God your master, God has a gift for you. Amen. And that gift is Jesus Christ, the gift of God. But I need to explain and let you know that, that this word gift has a very interesting meaning in the Greek because the Greek word for gift in this verse is the word charisma. Y'all say that with me one time. Charisma. And by definition, this word charisma, it means a divine gratuity. Y'all familiar with that word, aren't you? When you go to the restaurant, amen, we, we know it today as a tip. But during this time, in ancient times, it did not mean what it means today. It is a divine gratuity which is deliverance from danger or passion. Simply meaning that, that God gave us a divine gratuity, not by way of money, but by way of deliverance. You give, you, you give gratuity to a server who has given you good service. Sometimes you do. Amen. Y'all get quiet about it. I'm just trying to get you to understand that what, what God has did for us, he's given us a gift by way of a gratuity, but you know, you only tip the waiter or waitress when they give good service. Am I right? They don't give you good service and you start looking at your dinner guests and you say, I don't know how much we're going to give this person. I can like their service. Yeah. Amen. But restaurants have gotten smart, and so they add it on to your tab, or they tell you, this is how much you need to give your servant. But you know, a gratuity is something beyond that which they deserve because they already get paid. Anyway, it may be minimum wage, but they get paid. But here, God wants us to know that, that through his son, I've given you a 
maturity by way of a gift by the death of my son, and you don't deserve it. Because what you deserve was death, but now that you've received my son, I'm going to give you something better than death. I'm going to give you life. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah. But it's one thing about God's gift, and I've got to say this before I close, the one thing about God's gift is either you can accept it or you can reject it. Right, right. Amen. You know, sometimes, you know, you, you buy somebody a gift, right? And uh, you say, hey, girl, I bought you such and such. And they open it up and look at it and look at the side and say, girl, I can't wear this. I lost all this weight. You want me to wear this? You're going to have to take it back. Because you reject it because it doesn't fit. And you can reject the gift. Sometimes it may be from the wrong store. Amen? Yeah. Some folks don't shop where you shop. Okay, and I say, look here, I'm, I'm sorry, but uh, you know, girl, I don't shop here. I don't mean no disrespect, but, but, but you don't have to take this back. I, I don't shop here. I shop over there. Well, I did the best I could. I understand, but, but just just, just, just bless me this time and take it back, and I'll take care of it. Amen. Amen. Let me give you one more. Sad but true. It took me a long time to get out the doghouse with the business. It's been a while ago, but she went and bought me a pair of shoes. And unfortunately, Ed, the shoes were the wrong color. I'm a conservative type guy. And uh, she ended up giving the shoes to one of my nephews. And uh, she never let me forget about what happened with those shoes. And it was a long time before I ever got anything. For my birthday, for anniversary, for Christmas. But I learned. And things are better now. I learned not to reject gifts. But this gift is one that you can reject. And when you reject the gift, that means that you're going to accept what the other person has to give, and that's sin. And all sin is going to offer you is death. But let me tell you today that, that when you accept God's gift, God gives life. So what has and talk about Miss Eve because Eve accepted God's gift and Eve took life. Yeah. Eternal life. Yeah. Do you hear me this morning? So sometimes folks like to ask the question, well, what has God, God done for me? And I hear it all the time. You need to know that God has offered you life. Yeah. He's offered you eternal life. It's so good that it's free. You can't even work for it. It's, it's a free gift that God gives, and so all he's asking you is to accept it, don't reject it. Eve did not reject God's gift. She's looking good here this morning, ain't she all right? Isn't she looking good, dressed up in pink and red, designed the glasses? But you know what? Eve chose life. So somebody may want to know, where is she? Scripture's always got an answer for your questions. It's found in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 8. It says this. It says, we are confident. Yes, we are pleased to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. So my answer to you is, wherever Jesus is, that's where he is this morning. If he's in hell, if Jesus is in hell, Eve is there, but Jesus is taking care of her, even if she's in hell. But I'm just saying that as an explanation because she's not there, but wherever Jesus is, that's what Eve is. Amen. And so here's my final point here this morning, is that God has given to us eternal life. And with eternal life, there come some things that we need to understand here 
made today. Which is my final point. And that final point is that with eternal life, there comes some change. And when we say change, we mean it by one word that we call regeneration. And regeneration is better defined by what we call the new birth of being born again. Being born again means that the mind has been renewed and the mind can now receive the things that come from God. I don't care if you've been to the higher halls of learning, you can be a PhD, but you cannot receive the things from God until your mind has been renewed. The scripture says, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. It is the Holy Spirit that renews the mind. It is the Holy Spirit and the renewing of the mind that makes one want to go to church. Yeah. Didn't we have a good time here this morning? Yeah. Didn't the young lady and the, those that sang the Methodist songs, didn't they sing? Yeah. Didn't it have meaning? Didn't it have spirit? Because the mind has to be renewed and so there is change. Yeah. Yeah. And here's the final change here this morning. And this is what I like. Amen. Y'all see you here this morning? I want you, when you come around, because we're going to view the body, get a good look at Eve. Get a good look. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, get a good look. Why are you saying that, preacher? Because Eve, the next time you see Eve, Eve will not look like this no more. Y'all been hear me? And decide a few years later, 
you know what, Lord? I want you into my life. Because there's some people out there, when you tell them no, they're done with you. But God is gracious. And when we talk about God's grace, we talk about his unmerited favor. Don't fool yourself, brother. Don't fool yourself, sister. You may be doing good now, but that's the goodness of God. Once you leave here, it's over. One of the reasons preachers preach so hard is to get folk to understand that they need to save them. My suggestion this morning is before you leave here that you accept Christ as your Savior. I don't have time to really go into all kind of Bible, but all I want you to know this morning is that he died for you. He was buried in a wild man's tomb, shedding his blood on the cross, but, but this is what we like to say in Baptist style, early Sunday morning. Got up. How much power, church? All power. In his hand. He's never failed me yet. Heard by every cry. Where well, every head is bowed and every eye is closed. And if you're here today, you don't have to make a show. You know, all it takes to go to heaven is just believe that Jesus Christ was born into this world, that he hung on a cross, died for your sins, that he was buried, that he rose again. My brother, my sister, I want you to know that you are a sinner, and the evidence of your sin is that we've got to pass the same way that Eden passed. You've got to die. And since you got to die, or have to die, should I say, why, why not accept Christ as your Savior? What have you got to lose? He loves you. He's a very patient and tolerant Savior. He's calling for you. And if you can pray that prayer, that's enough power to get you there. My only suggestion to you this morning is that you find the church home of your choice. You don't have to join this church. Find one where you feel comfortable. That's the only reason I'm standing here today is to have the opportunity to share Christ with you. God bless your family. Thank you so much. May the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. You may not know it, but I've got a sermon to preach on Sunday, and I just got it. Amen. Amen. The director's going to come. He's going to lead us further into the service.
Thanks a million.